Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be doing the CSEC English A, May, June 2013, paper one. This is part two. So make sure you go and watch part one if you haven't done so. And there is a link somewhere on this video. You can click on it to watch part one or you can check in the description box below. And please, Give this video a thumbs up by liking this video. Also, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on your notification bell so that you know when new videos are being uploaded. So let's get into this. Items 21 to 28, the instruction says, read the following extract carefully and then answer items 21 to 28 on the basis of what is stated or implied. The title, The Oceans. It says, to the prejudiced eyes of land-abound humans, the oceans seem like one continuous mass as homogeneous as outer space. To some extent, they are, and some marine creatures treat the whole maritime world as their oyster. Some of the great whales, for instance, launch from the surface to the depths as a matter of course and divide their feeding and breeding between the poles and the tropics. Equally striking to the marine scientists, however, is the variousness of the oceans. Each sea embraces several or indeed many distinct environments, each of which occupies a discrete zone. Some of the, these zones also vary markedly with time through the day, with the tides and therefore with the phases of the moon by season and sometimes in cycles of several years. And superimposed on all these variations in space and time are the most erratic influences of currents and of the influx of rivers. In short, patchiness is in space and time is as much a feature of the oceans as it is of land. Indeed, patchiness is a great principle in ecology, though it is rarely singled out as such. Each oceanic zone has its characteristic creatures, sometimes a huge variety of different types and sometimes only a few. But many creatures of all kinds spend part of their lives in one kind of environment and part in another. And because there are so many different ways of making a living in the oceans, so many permutations of habitats, there is a correspondingly huge variety of creatures and many creatures take quite different forms and live in quite different ways at different stages of their lives. There are far fewer species in the oceans than on land. However, because there are no marine equivalents of the forest trees, and it is the trees that provide such a myriad of habitats for land-based creatures. The question says, the writer's main purpose in this passage is to A, show that the ocean is very diverse. 22 says, the word prejudice line one is nearest in meaning to be biased. So this question is a repeated one. 23 says, the writer says that prejudiced eyes see the ocean as being as homogeneous as outer space lines one to two. This description suggests that the ocean seems to be D, the same continuous stretch of water. 24 says, the statement, some marine creatures treat the whole maritime world as their oyster lines. Two to three suggest that they D, move freely throughout the oceans. 25 says, according to the passage, patchiness, line 13, refers to A, variation. 26 says, which of the following best describes the type of writing in this passage? C, informative. 27. According to the passage, which of the following statements is false? A, there are more species in the oceans than on land.
28 says, the clause, there are so many different ways of making a living in the oceans, line 16 to 17, refers to D, marine creatures. Twenty. Let's go to twenty-nine. So items twenty-nine to thirty-seven. So this is one of the question that we have not seen on any of the other past paper that I have done so far. So let's get into this one. It says read the following passage carefully and then answer the items on the basis of what is stated or implied. There were three chimpanzees. I came to know them well. They were young and nimble, yet with that over-anxious ancient of days expression of their kind. They would play for hours around a sapling outside my door, climbing and falling and wrestling with the exaggerated and over-emphatic tumbling of professional acrobats. It was impossible to believe in their naivete. So obviously did they show off to any passerby. They developed for themselves first a powerful curiosity, which caused them to peer forever through a window, wrapped around each other in intricate patterns. And then I rather believe a certain affection, or at least tolerance, at which stage they would knock on the door to be admitted. I came to feel very warmly about the apes. They would sit for hours on the floor beside my doorway, embracing each other with their six dark, sorrowful eyes fixed intently upon me. If I turn a page or crossed my legs, they would stir, stir quietly, nudging each other. To change my trousers in these circumstances became also an embarrassment. So intensely was the process observed. There was one genuinely startling moment. I was working beside the window, grinding out from the typewriter, whatever contemporary nonsense was required. In fact, a fragment of this book. When I glanced round, and there were the monkeys in a row by the doorway, beating out a ragged tattoo with their fingers on the floor, a very reasonable imitation. The chimpanzees showed interest in the mechanics of writing, more so in the process of drawing. One evening when I was sketching in the plantation, I felt those question reflective eyes on me again, and a group of leathery fingers reached out gently for the crayon. It occurred to me that whatever the chimpanzee did with it would scarcely be more futile than what I was doing myself, and I surrendered it. The effect was gripping. To begin with, the chimpanzees darted and slashed at the paper in an uncontrolled way, tearing the sheet, sometimes missing it altogether. Surprisingly soon, a kind of intention came over him, and on the third or fourth, fresh lead, he began to draw. There is no other word to describe what in fact the ape was doing. So a question says, 29 says, which of the following phrases is used in lines 1 to 15 to compare the chimpanzees with professional acrobats? A, young and nimble lines 2 to 3. B, over anxious expression lines 3 to 4. C, exaggerated and over-empathic, tumbling line 7, or D, wrapped in intricate patterns, lines 13 to 14. So we know that it is D, wrapped in intricate patterns. Let's go on to number 30. When the author says that he came to feel very warmly about the apes, line 18 to 19, he means that E, A, develop a genuine liking for the chimpanzees, B became enthusiastic about the chimpanzees' interest in writing, C grew embarrassed by the chimpanzees' close observation of him, or D became unhappy because the chimpanzees constantly watched him with sorrowful eyes. We know it is A, develop a genuine liking for the chimpanzees. 31 says, 
The genuinely startling moment referred to in lines 27 to 28 was caused by the? So our answer option, A, monkey's tuneful drumming on the floor, B, imitation of the writer's typing by the monkeys, C, interruption of the writer's typing by the monkeys, or D, writer's discovery of the monkeys sitting in a row in the doorway. So we know that it is our answers between A, or D. So I'm going to go A, writer's discovery of the monkey sitting in a row in the doorway. So it could be A too, but I'm going to go with D. 32 says, a rabbit tattoo line 33 means the same as um, wait. Thirty-two says a ragged tattoo line. Thirty means the same as a, a tuneful rhythm, b an irritating noise, c a rhythmical tapping, or d an irregular drumming. So we know that our answer a ragged tattoo is somewhat like a tapping sound. So our answer is c a rhythmical tapping. Let's go on to. Number 33, when the author says that the monkeys showed interest in the mechanics of writing line 36, he means that they looked at the way the typewriter worked, B, were curious about how things are put on paper, C, took away his pens, pencils, and crayons, D, examined the various part of the typewriter. So, a, looked at the way the typewriter worked. 34. It says, as used in line 39, question means the same as A, clever, B, trustful, C, inquisitive, or D, mischievous. So we know it is C, inquisitive. 35 says, the writer surrendered the crayons to the chimpanzee because E, B, felt that the chimpanzee could do no worse than himself. 36 says, we can infer from the effect was gripping line 44 that the author was B, interested in finding out what the chimpanzee would do next. 37. The passage can be best described as A, narrative, B, scientific, C, explanatory, or D, imaginative. For this one, I want you to tell me what would be your answer in the description below, and I'll respond and let you know if it is correct. Items 38 to 45. The instruction says, Read the following extract carefully and then answer the items on the basis of what is stated or implied. The title, Accounting. It says, Nights to warm for TB were flung outdoors to the porch, citronella candles sent in the space. Between us, our faces aglow in gold light. She crowds the car table with coin bags and abacus five and ten dollar rolling paper, our tidy ledger. I count line, I count line the coins in neat rows, the abacus clicking out our worth. How much can we save? Stack up against the seasons, winter coming. Her tightly braided hair turning white. Her hands quick filling the paper casings like homemade sausage. There's money in the bank downtown, but this will keep at home. Buried in jars beneath the house, the crawl space filling up. Packed solid as any foundation. All right, and as the footnote here suggests, that abacus, as we read, it is um, a device for making calculations. 38 says, the activity described in the poem is B, counting money. 39 says, she in the poem is most likely a thrifty. 40 says, 
Line three of the poem is an example of C, alliteration. And you can always scroll and go back to the line. For the ones that she crowds the card table, line five suggests that A, the card table is packed. Let's go on. So 42, the comparison between the paper cations and homemade sausages, lines 14 to 15, is a reference to C, shape. 43 says, the crawl space line 19 most likely refers to B, a low cramped area. 44 says, the money is being saved to D, safeguard against need in winter. We did saw that in the passage. 45 says, the phrase solid as any foundation lines 19 to 20 suggests C, how secure it made the owners feel. Let's go on. So items 46 to 54. The instruction says read the following passage carefully and then answer items 46 to 54 on the basis of what is stated or implied. So we have a letter to the editor. Music too loud, I can't study. This is another repeat question. It says the editor, I just can't take it anymore. I just can't take the noise forced on me by a restaurant and bar located across the street. The noise is unbearable and I cannot concentrate on my studies. I am writing the CXE exams in May, June this year and I must pass all my subjects. I am attending a reputable girls school and I want to achieve good grades to get into the CAPE class. I work hard and every report so far indicates that I am an above average student. I want to make my mother proud. She is a hardworking woman, especially since my father passed away two years ago. We have been struggling to make ends meet without complaint, but I must complain now because the restaurant and bar is intent on frustrating my ambitions and the sacrifices my mother is making. I appreciate the help of the government in providing opportunities for education, but this is going to be futile unless it is possible to take full advantage of them. Can you imagine having to struggle with a math problem with thunderous noise bombarding your eardrums and everything in your house jumping up and down as if the place is haunted? Can you imagine speaking to a classmate about homework and you can't hear each other? Can you imagine stuffing cotton in your ears in order to get some sleep? Can you imagine trying to explain to your teacher that you didn't do your homework or that you sleep in class because of the noise coming from the restaurant and bar? The noise coming from this place is a serious obstacle that I am unable to overcome and I am seeking help in dealing with it. Can you imagine my mother and her 16-year-old daughter going to this place in the midst of riotous drinking to ask them to turn down the music because I want to study or just to get some sleep? I understand that residents have been calling the police, but the response has been ineffective. At the moment of writing this letter, Sunday, 19 at 9.30 a.m., they are blasting away after going late into last night. Under the guise of carnival, they will continue their merciless onslaught. From carnival Friday night right up until Ash Wednesday morning, they will continue non-stop. There will be total madness. So 46 says the words, I just can't take it anymore, line one, imply that the writer is, you know, it is, be arguing. 47 says, the repetition of I in the first paragraph can be best interpreted as highlighted, highlighting the writer's B, frustration. Which of 48, which of the following devices does the writer use in paragraph 2 to explain her plight? D, rhetorical questions. You'll see that. 49, which of the following words best conveys the emotion that the writer is seeking to arouse in the reader? We know it is D, empathy. 50 says, 
The following sentence, I work hard and every report so far indicates that I am an above average student. Line five suggests that the writer is, that the writer, C, wants to sustain this. 51 says, jumping up and down as if the place is on the line 12 is an example of which of the following devices? So is it A, simile, B, paradox, C, irony, or D, personification? Let me know in the description box, in the comment section below what you think is your answer. 52. What effect does the writer achieve when she says, can you imagine my mother and her 16-year-old daughter going to this place in the midst of writers drinking lines 19 to 20? We know it is C, criticism for their actions in going to the bar. 53 says, the last line of the passage expresses the view that D, the noisy atmosphere will become worse. 54 says, the kind of writing is best classified as, this is also what I want you to tell me. This is testing your knowledge based on what you have learned so far in English. A, what type of writing is this? So I want you to comment in the section, comment section below for that as well. So items 55 to 56, I've never seen this on any past people yet that I have worked out. The instruction says read the following information carefully and then answer items 55 to 60 on the basis of what is stated or implied. The title at Jamaica Kincad Chronology. I became a writer out of desperation. I started to write about my own life and I came to see that this act saved my life. So we get the different years of what happened. So let's go to question 55. What is the birth name of the author. So let us look at this and see the birth name. So the name is Elaine Potter Richardson. So we're looking for that. So here, C, Elaine Richardson. 56 says, according to the chronology, when did the author's publishing career start? So let's go and see when it started. So here, she went to school, she went to the U.S., then she changed her name. In the, so 1974 says, first piece published in the New Yorker. So we're looking for the answer in 1974. So here we go. B would be our answer. 57 says, what was the author's first job in the United States? Let's go and see what it was. So here it says, here in 1969, she, after she finished school, she took up some short-term jobs and freelance, freelance writing assignments. So writing was her first job. She was a writer. No, no. It says, what was the author's first job in the United States? No. So her first job was here, 1965, she was sent to US as a domestic worker. Domestic helper. So D would be her answer. So it says first job, first job, 58 now. Here it says, in what year did the author return to Antigua? Let's look and see. So, married in 1979, 19, so here, 1986, revisits Antigua. All right, so 1986, so D would be your answer. 59 says, according to the chronology, how many years separated the author's two children? So let's look and see. So, she had her daughter in 1985, her daughter was born, and then in 1989, her son Harold was born. So, that's a four-year gap. 
So four years B would be our answer. And our final question says, under which name did the author publish the book, the autobiography of my mother? So let's look and see what name. The autobiography of my book. Okay, so this book was published and this came after she was married. So she married to Alan Sean. So we're looking for that. So it was after she got married. So B, Elaine Sean would be our answer. So this is it. We have come to the end of the CSEC English A, May, June 2013, paper one. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.